for coming out today, everyone. Um, we're fortunate to have Marissa Berger fill in for this week's math discussion, so thank you for taking the spot. And uh, I'll let her take it away. The key words there, thank you, Bill. Key words fill in, so therefore I'm not as prepared as other um, people have been in the past. I brought some candy corn flavored popcorn. There's some napkins there. Feel free to help yourself. Very good. Um, <laughs> isn't it good? Mm, yeah. I think it's good. That's why I want everybody else to eat it because it's not a whole bag. Um, so we'll start out, obviously, it's been a bit of a topsy turvy time here in October. Begin. This is going back the last uh, 30 or so days, departure from normal average. And uh, as you all remember, it was quite warm in September and very warm at the beginning of December, uh, October. And then we had a big flip. Let me turn this down a little bit because I'm hearing echoes. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. Nobody, yeah, needs, that. nobody needs to hear me. Um, and then we flipped, and it's we've been in a bit of a chilly pattern here. And Weather World also tweeted this today. Um, October October has never really felt like October. First 12 days are on the left here, more like August and September, with temperatures 9 to 12 degrees above average. And in the past 10 days, more like November, with temperatures 5 to 7 degrees below average. So I thought that was cute. Ben, good job there. Um, so what does that imply about how October is going to end up relative to normal? You want me to answer that? Or yeah. you want one of them to answer that? Oh, anybody can answer that. I think last I saw it was like maybe plus three. I think last I saw. So and we stay cold, we'll probably end up near normal, right? Yeah. So normal. I was going to say, will we even end up a little below since our flip happened yeah. on, the on the 11th, not at the middle of so the month? So the monthly mean will be yeah. Around, yeah. Yeah. an average month, but yeah. Yeah, extremes like extreme, on both yeah, sides. Yeah, extremes on both sides. Um, and for those of you who've never been on the state climatologist website, for those of you who don't know, the state climatology office is right over there. And the daily almanac here on the right shows you your normal high and normal low. And uh, right now our normal high, that's for University Park 59, we're at 54. So only just a few degrees below the average high there or the normal high. Um, you can see the map starting to uh, get a little chilly there in the northwest, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Here is the current surface map, and you guys see, I feel like my head is in the way. Um, I like to use this surface map from UCAR because you get to see a lot more stations, and it's always fun when a cold front is about to sweep through. You can see the front has already made it from Michigan and is now through central Ohio. Winds are starting to gust there. Not necessarily the easiest to see. It looks like maybe 17 miles per hour, 17 knots, 19 knots up in uh, northeastern um, Ohio. So it's I've noticed just looking out the window, it's starting to get a little bit breezy outside. And uh, that will continue. It's 55 right now at UNV. And I think that's the warmest we'll see for the next couple of days. Surface map for across the nation shows that area of low pressure over in eastern Canada and southeastern Canada, and that's going to sweep through northern New England. And uh, parts of northern Maine could get a decent snow there. Here in Pennsylvania, it looks like we are going to deal with just a little bit of light rain, and then this evening changing over to a few snowflakes. Um, maybe we'll see a flurry as far south as here, but I would not get overly excited about that. Um, not a ton of moisture with this system that's sweeping through right now. Um, but I guess in the parts of central New York now, stuff is starting to fire up. And then you can see behind it in parts of the uh, UP and lower Michigan, starting to get some of the uh, lake enhanced and lake effect stuff coming in. So tomorrow, I think, with this system, it sweeps through, and we just get that uh, gusty northwesterly, northerly winds and some clouds and maybe even a um, few spritzes here and there. But then that moves out. And then we have a big, we have a couple of days of not much, very dull, benign weather. But then we have the potential for some excitement this weekend. For those of you in the audience, why is it, too early to give details on this weekend. As weather communicators, we want to talk about what we know 
is going to happen? What do we know is, is going to happen this weekend? There's going to be a storm system somewhere in the vicinity of the East Coast. Right, right now all indications, you know, all the models are in pretty much agreement that there's going to be some sort of system along the East Coast. <laughs> Why can't we really go into more detail than that at this point? Uncertainty. There's a lot of uncertainty. And one of the reasons for that is because part of what's going to happen this weekend is what's happening right now in the Eastern Pacific with Hurricane Willa. Willa has not even made landfall yet, and yet that's part of the energy that's going to be transported across the Gulf of Mexico and up the Eastern Seaboard this weekend. So how Willa acts once it makes landfall and once it moves across Texas, that's really, things are really going to change this weekend. And it's really hard now to say what's going to happen when this hasn't even come ashore yet. It's close. Um, it's still a pretty strong storm. It's category three, so it's still a major hurricane. Winds are sustained at 125 miles per hour. And the pressure is 966 millibars. It was stronger yesterday, it's weakening now. <coughs> The bad news about Willa um, is that it's making a beeline for South Texas. And part of the problem there is that they had that heavy rain last week. I don't know if any of you saw the video from Central Texas last week. They had some pretty bad rain last week. It was raining there this morning. And it looks like they are going to get some more rain from this now. So there's the system that's moving out of uh, Southeast Texas right now but it does look like Willa is going to bring more moisture into Texas. So I think that will be a big headline in the coming days, more flooding across that state. And so if we're gonna start here, we'll start with the NAM, this morning's NAM. I have not looked very hard at any of this because I had a bunch of other um, commitments this morning. So we'll look at this together on the four panel here. And uh, so there goes that exiting system in New England tonight. High pressure starts to build in tomorrow. And even though high pressure is going to be building in, it's tough this time of year to get a bright sunny day unless high pressure is sitting right over us. And when we have that northerly flow and cold air aloft, we tend to get the clouds here. But look at Texas tomorrow night. Um, heavy rainfall is likely. And then what we see going in towards Friday and Saturday, stuff here, Friday map, we start to see this trough digging into the uh, Mississippi Valley. And that's going to be a big player here as well. So we've got that trough, and we're going to combine that with this low pressure system with what was the energy of Willa that's going to form somewhere along the coast. And those two are going to um, hook up and create a potential problem for the Eastern seaboard. And again, exactly where this happens and when this happens, I just heard Bill say this is fast. This one is a lot faster than the yeah, NAM usually isn't the fastest. Yeah. So the so yeah, it's not only the location of the low, but how fast the models have this moving. There's huge differences. So this is what the NAM is showing. You can see the, the digging here along the east, and then so this is zero Z Saturday. So Friday night, you can see the uh, bullseye of precipitation right by the Del Marva. But now let's head over to the 12 Z GFS. Which, for those of you, if you were looking yesterday, the GFS was the one that kept the storm mostly out to sea and didn't bring us, I think, any precipitation at all. It just looked um, like we'd be on the back end chilly side. Um, and this is a big weekend, not only because of football. It's a game 330. I think so. Okay, so we've got a home game. But it's also, this time of year, there's still tons of fall festivals going on in central Pennsylvania. It's the weekend before Halloween, so a lot of people celebrating that so not necessarily the best weekend to have bad weather so the gfs also has um that heavy precipitation in southern and eastern texas by tomorrow evening and then racing along right along the gulf coast and here you can start to see that trough digging in now we were looking at what saturday zero z was where the nam already had a lot of precipitation here. This is when, this is the same time period, but the trough really isn't even, it's just starting to dig into the Mississippi Valley, although that low is off of the South Carolina coast. And 
it moves it right up along Virginia. And by Saturday night, that's when we now have some heavy precipitation here. You can see the easterly flow. Easterly flow, for those of you who are familiar with Pennsylvania, um, really helps in bringing us precipitation here um, in central Pennsylvania. Um, and while this doesn't look cold enough for snow, I think some of the higher elevations would have a shot at this. Um, but that's some pretty nasty uh, QPF there. That gets us pretty wet. And it does something weird here where the low then backs into Pennsylvania and the Poconos by Sunday afternoon. I don't know about the likelihood of that. I don't think we tend to see storm tracks like this very often. That's you know, usually cold for the air. Yeah, going up yeah with we, this whole thing looks a little lower uh, levels and the, the January, surface lows. Right? Mm. It just looks a little weird to me. So I don't know how much I'd place my bets here. Um, if anybody's going to New England this weekend, I think it's going to be pretty nasty there. Uh, and then behind it, more cold air rushes in. And uh, there's even another little ding-dong coming in on Monday night, Tuesday morning. Um, the other model yesterday that was going nuts was the Canadian. We'll look at the Zero Z Canadian. That was the one that was looking at the most snowy for the weekend. Again, this is last night's model run because this morning's is not in yet. So here's your Friday zero Z. And this one, oh, this is all sorts of a mess here. Again, that trough not really fully, fully digging in quite yet. And a mess with a not really sure what half, what it was doing there with all those lows. Um, some sort of it's freaking out there. Um, but it's got the bulk of the precipitation into central Virginia. So this has it pretty far inland. Um, and that looks like a pretty big uh, snow fest for parts of northern New York and the western Maine. Um, that one I think is also a little bit crazy. And then finally we'll go to, oh, won't we'll do it on this one? Oh, we no. can't do the euro on this one? That's a bummer. Okay, so we won't look at the euro one. Um, that's right. I'm not good at looking at their site because I don't use it very often. Um, I do want to point out regarding this weekend, before you go ahead and look at forecasts, one thing I really like to do is I like to go to the National Weather Service website. We'll go there. And I love reading their discussions. And I thought today's was really nicely written talking about the uncertainties for this weekend. And um, first they have here, there is a fairly, fairly large spread in model solutions for the eventual surface load that would be an offshoot of the East Pacific Category 5 hurricane. Obviously that was from yesterday or early this morning. It is forecast to come ashore along the Mexican coast just south of Mazatlan and dissipate inland. The upper level energy is made to eventually emerge over the Gulf of Mexico and entice a surface wave to form and move up the eastern seaboard. And then, the problem arises with some marginal cold air in place and the potential for an early season snowfall. It's still too early to get excited about snow amounts given the spread in model outcomes, but it will have all eyes upon it over the next several days. As a result, I, who's the I? I don't know if it's, John LaPorte or Barry Lambert, but one of them um, used blended moss pops and the current scenario shows precipitation possible by late Friday night with the best chance of rain or wet snow during the day Saturday. This time of year, snow is highly dependent on elevation, time of day or night, as well as precipitation rates. And I really like that paragraph there because that's something you really need to pay attention to this time of year. It's a lot harder to get snow during the day this time of year easier at night. Um, elevation, the higher the elevation, the easier it is to get snow. And if the precipitation is falling more heavily, there's an easier, better chance for it to be falling in more solid form. So um, I thought that was a really nice um, way to say it. At this point, if someone were to ask you what's the forecast for this weekend, tell them what you know, don't tell them what you don't know. Say there's going to be a coastal storm um, too early to tell what it's going to be like here 
Um, but be prepared that it's not going to be pleasant. Bill keeps saying 36 degrees and pouring rain because that's what he's looking forward to Saturday after we go to Beaver Stadium. Um, one other thing I wanted to bring up, especially after yesterday morning's, um, the Canadian had us in, you know, Snowmageddon. A website I really like to use this time of year is Foliage Network. I'm one of these people who loves seeing the leaves change. And this year, there's not much of that happening. I don't know for those of you who are relatively new to the area. Uh, this is bizarre right now with how green everything still is and how many leaves are still on the trees. If we go to the current map that they put here on Foliage Network, they had one out yesterday. I think they put them out on Mondays and Thursdays. Um, not much happening in Pennsylvania. It looks like right now they're saying moderate color, and I don't even know if I'd call this moderate. I have a feeling this year we're going to be green, and then just their leaves are going to fall off. Um, but leaf drop is the thing I was interested in. We are, I don't even know if I would consider what we're under right now, moderate leaf drop. There has, I haven't seen anybody really breaking yet. Uh, but that, if it were to snow this weekend, and that's a big, big if, I think that's going to be our biggest problem. When you get wet snow on top of trees that still have their leaves on it, it causes major issues. And um, that happened here in October of 2009 when there was a snowstorm. And that, so I, as much as I love snow, seeing all the leaves on the trees, I'm hoping that this weekend we don't get it just because this is so strange. But what I also want to show you is they archive their foliage reports. So and it's fun to compare years. Compared last year. Last year wasn't a very good season either. Come on. This is not like. That October 22nd. So we'll go to October 23rd of last year and see the difference. Should have done this as a different window. Come on. And where's my other page going? Some of the no, no, the absolutely not. <laughs> Come on, I'm a Mac person, and you'd never know that right now. Yeah, solstice really slowed us down. The rise on that. My lord. Can I make this window a little bit smaller? Yeah, you can toss that to the side. All right, so. It was last year's. Okay. Yeah, finally. Sorry that took forever. We're not going to donate money, even though I love this website. And all these videos play. It drives me nuts. So, okay, now we can compare. Oh my gosh, go away. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have no patience for that. So if you look at last year compared to this year, um, up in Maine, there's a huge difference. Maine went earlier this year than last year. But then there's a big flip in Pennsylvania. There was more of a flip last Thursdays um, in central New York. So our eastern New York, you can see in the Adirondacks, much earlier here in um, what part of New York is that called? Cats. Is that the Catskills? 
um, where they're at peak now. Last year they were done. And uh, many places in the Laurel Highlands and uh, or central Pennsylvania were at peak this time last year, whereas now Laurel Highlands aren't even at high color. So I just find this, I was looking at this last week, and it was just so strange to me how the southern half of these maps completely contrasted with the northern half of these. Um, and let's look at leaf drop compared to last year. Doesn't look like much of a difference. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to point that out partly because I like foliage, um, which it's foliage, not foliage, for those of you who have to say it on air. Um, but also because if there is any snow in any, and not even just here, but since leaf drop is really not happening in New York yet, that's going to be a big problem there as well. And that could be the big story of the weekend if places do get snow. Um, I think it would be fun to go to the coast and watch the storm personally. Is there anything anybody else wanted to look at? Like I said, I didn't have much to, uh, I was told, look at the weekend, and that's what we done. But does anybody have any questions? I also started looking ahead. For those of you who know me, I am a little bit of a Halloween freak. Um, and just even though this is just playing and having fun. For those of you who don't know, in Pennsylvania, there are local municipalities get to decide when trick-or-treating happens. And that was new to me. Um, growing up, it was a free-for-all where I lived. So different towns here in Pennsylvania do trick-or-treating on different days. In the center region, which is State College Borough and the surrounding townships, it actually is on Halloween this year. It's not like that every single year. So it is on the 31st. And... I looked at the GFS and I looked at the Euro, which I can't show you. Right now, all indications are for dry weather. Halloween. So trick-or-treating is from 6 to 8 on Halloween night. So if any of you are doing a campus weather service forecast and you want to throw that in, make sure you know that. Um, and it's great. Somebody knocks on your door at 8.01. You don't have to answer it. <laughs> well, then you wash the egg off your door the next time. Um, or they'll smash my pumpkins or something. Uh, any other questions? Sorry that, uh, you know, I can't say that we're going to get a foot of snow and that it's going to be fun, but can't do that. The Weather Channel is going nuts with it. Gave them something to look at. Cat 5 to Nor'easter was the, uh... Oh! What was it? Cat 5 to Nor'easter. Yeah. Cat 5 to Nor'easter. Uh, that's actually a decent headline. Yeah. Not lying. It's I mean, it's legitimate. Yeah, yeah, the same system. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So once Willow makes landfall and other stuff starts falling into place, and you can see the timing of that trough digging down um, in relation to the surface low, it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. Either way, it gives us something to look at and makes for some exciting weather to talk about. Gets the, the weenies weenie, which we all love. All right, so score of the game, Bill? Five to three. <laughs> is that baseball or is that a... That's <laughs> Iowa. All right, well, thanks. And next we have uh, Elliot Abrams. Wow.